Okay, uh... I want to tell you about my life, and the strange things I've seen, and before I do, I... I want you to understand that my actions in the end had their reasons, um... Okay, I was born to a single mother. She was only 15 around the time I was born, and she wasn't exactly ready to be a mother. Apparently my dad was even less ready because his parents ended up sending him to a boarding school so he wouldn't have to be responsible for me and my mother. We were mostly supported by her parents, but um, otherwise we, we were completely alone. I started discovering my gift when I was about five years old. My great-grandmother had passed away. I felt really confused when I walked into the viewing room of the funeral parlor and saw my grand sitting in a chair next to her own casket. At that point, I already grasped that death meant you were gone forever, and yet there she was. My confusion was overpowered with my relief. Approaching her, she seemed different. There, but not quite the same. Like... When you're picturing something in your head. Your eyes are open, and you're clearly seeing what's in the room, but something entirely different at the same time. She whispered in my ear, kissed my forehead, and disappeared. I walked up to my mom and asked her about the roses in Italy as Gran instructed. To this day, I still don't know what that meant, but it was something important enough to make my mom fall to her knees. She held me, and... That was the only time that I remembered feeling like she truly loved me. Okay, um, as, as I grew, my gift became a little more apparent. I'd see people when I wasn't supposed to in everyday situations. A few would even notice and follow me home. I didn't mind. None of them ever imposed or tried to harm me. They just wanted company until they figured out how to move on or until they found someone that was more interesting to follow around. I'd talk about it as if it were normal. My mother put forth no effort to stop me, but still acted embarrassed when I did it around other people. No one took it seriously, though. Not like, not like Mom did. Honestly, I think she feared me for a while. When I was about eight, things changed, and it was all due to Mom meeting a man named Mike. He was lanky, and he smelled bad, and talked too loud. Still, he had a more stable job than Mom did, so she fell right into his lap. He wasn't a horrible guy at first, just, just kinda greedy. My mom told him about my gift, and he came up with this master plan to, to use me as a pay pig. Post my name up in the phone books as the world's youngest psychic. I don't even know if he believed my gift was real at first, but, um, he learned otherwise eventually. But, um, that's how I started talking to dead people as a living when I was just beginning to learn multiplication. It was fun at first, when it wasn't the same old tell my mother I loved her bullshit. <sighs> there was a case when I was 13, where I was seeing a family who believed the spirit of a 14-year-old girl was haunting their house. They claimed that they didn't intend to make the girl leave, they just wanted to learn more about her so they could make her more comfortable in their home. When I walked into their house, there... there definitely was no little girl. There, there was, however, a grey, non-human entity crouched on their 17-year-old son's back. Its skin looked like paper, and its eyes were fully blood-red. It came in human-like shape, but it was it was far from human. These non-human entities were something I called sixes. Sixes are souls that were never human. They're created out of pure sorrow and hatred. Their negative emotion embodied into an evil spiritual being. They can project the actions of human spirits to confuse their hosts, make them think they're just victims of a normal haunting. Human souls can't hurt you, unless they're extremely sinister, like Bundy sinister. Sixes, however, um, along with several other non-human entities, 
Um, they can. They suck every emotion out of you and radiate so much of their own sorrow and hatred until you either kill yourself or commit a crime so horrible that you'll likely get the death penalty. They usually go after evil, corrupt, or just plain miserable people. They were called sixes because you'd usually only last six months before you lost it. I think I started presenting my mother when I was 16. I had gotten tired of the job. Everyone in town knew me. All the kids at school called me a freak. And by this point, Mike had started drinking away all the money that people had paid me to tell them that their grandmother loved them or that their dead child was in a better place. He became violent. Angry. He hit my mom. And she just took it for a while. Then she... She started to blame me. She said if you never would have started talking to fucking Casper, maybe we wouldn't be in this situation. Completely ignoring the fact that he was her boyfriend, not mine. Not long after that, he stopped hitting her and started hitting me. Then she did too. Only months later did I start seeing sixes roaming around wherever my parents were near. I watched this without a word, still allowing them to escort me to jobs. At first, sixes would stay far away. I'd see them out the window, across the street. They creep closer as time went on, very slowly. My curiosity heavily outweighed my fear. I had only ever seen them on people's backs. I became a bit more startled when they stood at our windows. They knew I could see them, but uh, they disregarded me. I said nothing to my mother the day I watched one crawl onto her back and latch its gaping, teethed mouth on her shoulder. I wasn't surprised when I saw another on Mike's back later that day. I thought about telling Mike and my mother. I really did. Uh, Calling up a specialist to help get rid of the sixes that had only just begun to drain my sad excuse for family. Then, I thought about finally being alone. Never having to do jobs that they told me to do. Never being subjected to a drunken lecture about my responsibility to support my family. Never explaining my bruises away to teachers. So... <laughs> I didn't tell them. I just sat back and enjoyed the show. <laughs>